not a kid. That's a 13-year-old actor. While Harry and Ron were bonding on the Hogwarts Express, Daniel and Rupert weren't even filming in the same compartment. Looking back, the Harry Potter cast has a lot of revelations about what really went down behind the scenes. From the props that actually terrified them to lines you never knew were improvised, here's how the cast reacted to their favorite, and least favorite, moments on set. Paper on bone, can't So you? I couldn't use that one. Emma Watson doesn't quite know her own strength. While Daniel was re-watching the library scene where Emma hits him over the head, he revealed that she went a little overboard. There was one take when it was very hard. While the sound was perfectly realistic, they couldn't use the take because both Emma and Daniel cracked up afterwards. You're laughing because you hit me so hard, aren't you? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> The cast also enjoys looking back on scenes they weren't in, particularly if that scene involves one of their friends being hit in the head repeatedly with projectiles. Can't wait to see this. Matthew Lewis and Alfie Enoch reacted to the training Rupert had to do to practice for his Quidditch scene. It involved warming up with the stuntman and then having a ball thrown at his face to try and practice how he would block shots while flying on a broom. Oh, oh God, no, that's got him in the face. But don't worry, they made sure to hype him up a little too. Is there anything this man can't do? I don't think so. Did you know that during the first film, one of Emma's teeth was fake? How there. embarrassing is that? She had just lost one on her front teeth right before filming. And I had to wear a kind of like a... Piece, like a tooth. Yeah. But Emma shouldn't be too embarrassed. The young cast later revealed that they all had fake versions of their teeth made, in case any of them lost some while filming. So they just like, would like cost everyone's mouth. Like so it was bound to happen to someone. Teeth test. Okay. The very first scene filmed in the entire series was of the students leaving Hogwarts, and nerves were running high. Daniel admits he was feeling a lot like Harry must have been. It was slightly nerve wracking. I was terrified. Emma felt the same way as it was her first time on such a big movie set. Never stepped on a film set in my life, never acted professionally before, and then you walk onto this enormous set. And it was a lot more difficult than she thought it would be. It's not easy. Rupert felt like he had some big shoes to fill. And it was quite a scary world to come into. But he ended up enjoying his first real acting experience. I was really nervous, but it turned out it was quite cool. One problem that comes with filming a young cast is all the laughing, smiling, and general hijinks. Rupert, in particular, had to be told a few times to relax his face and be more serious. <laughs> Didn't really work, to be honest. <laughs> the giggling got so bad that Rupert remembers how he and Daniel couldn't be in the same compartment on the Hogwarts Express. They had to be separated to film all their close-ups and lines. Because um, we just couldn't look each other in the eye and keep a straight face. Looking back on all the eating he did in the first few films, Rupert revealed that all the Wizarding World treats were delicious and made specifically for the movies. This is before kind of you could buy all the kind of Harry Potter sweets. They even had a team of scientists working on the every flavor beans, which impressed Rupert because it made his dreams of eating in the Harry Potter universe a reality. He was one of the very first people to get to try foods that are pretty famous today. This was all kind of coming straight off the page. It was easy for Rupert Grint to pretend to be afraid of Aragog because in real life he was terrified. It really did make me feel uneasy. I didn't, didn't really like looking at it at all. There was no CGI here, just a huge mechanical spider that could actually move. Rupert was so disturbed by the animatron creature that looking back he says he's still not able to watch that scene. <laughs> I just I just couldn't, I still can't watch that scene. It's absolutely terrifying. Did you know that Lucius and Harry's showdown at the end of Chamber of Secrets was partially improvised? And there was no line there. And I said to Chris Columbus, I just feel like he'd say something. Jason Isaacs went with, Let's hope Mr. Potter will always be around to save the day. But what shocked him was that Daniel effortlessly came up with a comeback. Don't worry, I will be. Isaacs was entirely impressed by his skills. That's not a kid, that's a 13 year old actor. Thinking back, Matthew Lewis and Alfie Enoch can't help but feel bad for the crew who had to try and keep 11-year-olds in line while they were having fun with broomsticks. We were messing around all the time. While it was a bit scary, being strapped to a broom is one of Matthew's funnest memories from the series. And they call it work. It was, it was brilliant. He even compared the experience to an exhilarating ride at a theme park. You're flying around on this roller coaster type thing.
Reminiscing on one of his favorite scenes, Rupert revealed that the wizarding chess game from the very first movie was pretty dangerous and involved pyrotechnics. The board was lit up with real fire, and when the pieces were hit, they actually exploded. Rupert even got to keep a memento from this scene, a broken piece from the exploding horse. And he was praised by director Chris Columbus for his performance. Rupert was so strong. Some Harry Potter sets were completely digital, like the Hall of Prophecies, but while reacting to these scenes, the cast admits it was hard to give convincing performances. Is this all we have? One of the ways they got around this was by playing spooky sounds to get the actors into the right mindset. But they still had to face the problem of not having anything concrete to look at really be able to pinpoint where everything is meant to be at the right time. There were even markers and crew standing off to the side to help show the actors where to look. And in the end, director David Yates was thoroughly impressed by the young cast. The greatest green screen pros in the universe. The Great Hall was one of the most massive sets in the entire series, but it was surprisingly 100% real. It was a huge room made of stone, and even the lit candles hanging from the ceiling were real. Emma revealed watching it back that she didn't even have to pretend to be in awe while filming. No acting required. It also turns out that the cast's first scene in the hall was a surprise for everyone. We've never seen the Great Hall ever. Even looking back, they can't believe how much this epic set really brought Hogwarts to life. Hermione and Ron's kiss seemed pretty romantic to us, but in reality, Emma and Rupert think back on that scene as one of the weirdest and most awkward ones to film. Kissing Rupert, uh, <laughs> also awkward. Rupert felt weird about kissing his friend of over 10 years. It just felt a little bit, it felt quite self-conscious. While Emma compared the scene to kissing a sibling. It was honestly like kissing my brother. Thankfully, they wrapped it up in four takes so that it was over pretty quickly. But it's a wonder they managed to get a good take at all, since they couldn't stop laughing while the cameras were rolling. Fiona Shaw will never forget a problem she had while dealing with some of the first film's animal actors. The owls were supposed to look at Aunt Petunia during this scene, but they kept getting distracted by the camera. So the crew had to come up with a solution that wasn't very appealing. We hung dead mice from my apron. It definitely made the owls focus on her more, but we'll never look at this scene the same now that we know about Aunt Petunia's interesting fashion accessory. Warwick Davis pulled double duty in the first film as the Gringotts bank teller and Professor Flitwick. I was made to look very different as the bank teller. But despite amazing prosthetics that made him look creepy, he remembers getting giggles out of Daniel during their scene. Chris wanted Dan to kind of look shocked. However, Davis's attempt to make Daniel look even remotely phased didn't work at all. Look me in the eye when I'm talking to you! But in the end, Daniel managed to at least look confused while being surrounded by actors covered in thick layers of prosthetics. And does Mr. Harry Potter have his key? While Rupert grins happy to react to onset moments, you might be surprised to know that he's never seen the entire series. He's only watched the first three films. Though he does say he's open to changing that now that he started a family. We wonder which one will end up being his favorite.